thank you for your cross. We thank you for dying to set us free. We thank you that you can lead us to your cross and then to great victory. Amen, amen. Welcome all. We're so glad you're here. Amen. Amen. I, they beat, therefore I am. Good job. Thank you. Lord, we ask your blessing on this offering. Yes, Lord Jesus. Flood us with your peace, your power, and your presence. Flood us with your peace, your power, your presence. We thank you that people are obedient to give as you have called them to give in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Dustin. So I'm going to have Dustin pass around a connection card. On the back of the card is a prayer request or a testimony. Let us keep connected. You know where they are? They're on the they're on the greeting desk, and there are cards like that size. And there's pencils there too, inside and outside. How amazing! What an amazing day, Lord! We'd ask for your healing mercy on our pastor, that you would bless him and that you would flood him with your power, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you that you are the God that heals, totally and completely heals. And we thank you for the testimonies of healing in our lives and in our church family. Announcements, announcements, announcements. Announcements are that next Sunday after service is our membership class. If you've been a member here for a while, you may want to come because I like doing them, I think. And if you're new here in the past year or so, we would love for you to come. It'll talk, we'll get a chance to know you, you'll get a chance to know us, and we'll get a chance to tell you what you can expect from us or ask you what you can and ask you what we can expect from you. So pretty amazing um, year it's been in our lives. COVID has crippled some churches and, and yet you all are here. How grateful to God I am, amen. Amen, amen. So we're going to be in the 21st chapter of John this morning. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified, and I want you to know that this is the last gospel chapter that John wrote. He wrote other things later on, but this is the last chapter. After saying this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Jesus, and he did this this way. Simon, Peter, Thomas, Dinamis, Nathaniel from Canaan, John and Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. And Peter said to them, I'm going to go on fishing. And they said, we're coming with you. So they got in the boat, and they went out all night long, and they caught nothing. At breakfast, as morning was breaking, Jesus came and stood on the beach. However, the disciples did not know it was Jesus. So Jesus said, children, do you have any fish to eat along with your bread? And they said, no. He said, cast the net on the right side of the boat, on the starboard side, and you'll find some. So they cast the net, and they were not able to haul it in because of the great catch of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved and esteemed said to Peter, it is the Lord. So when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer tunic, for he was stripped from his ear, and threw himself into the sea and swam ashore. But the other disciples came along in the boat, for they knew it was not far away from shore, only about a hundred yards away, dragging a net full of fish. The fisherman's style in those days was to throw a hand net, a two-man hand net. You throw it out there, you pull in the fish, and then you do it again and again and again all night long, because fish get caught better. Now I have to under you have to understand that fishing like this is a dirty job because the net comes in and there's all kinds of goo in it. I have personal testimony of this because when I was a kid or when I was a teenager, dad bought a scallop boat. And scalloping, if you don't know what that is, it's a big metal dredge and it goes along the bottom of the ocean and grabs everything that's there. I mean, everything, every kind of goo, beer can, whatever it is, all comes up. And so you go through the net, you dump it on the boat, you throw the thing back over, and then you uh, cull through them and take the scallops and, and duck the scallops. But everything else is goo. Everything else is gross. Everything else is unbelievable when you drag the bottom of the ocean. You can just imagine what's down there. Actually, 
you probably can't imagine what's down there. But there's some really gross stuff down there. So I would come out of our fishing truck, gooey, scallop everywhere. We try and uh, drag a, drive the boat a few miles away from where we were because the sharks really liked our scallop droppings. And you don't want to go swimming where the sharks are. So I would literally go swimming deep out at sea just to get the goo off. So I understand why Peter wants to um, go into the water with a tunic on him. You, that would be how it is. But he's gooey and he wants to cover it up because he's going before the Lord. Good morning, good morning. So we've got this story that recounts all kinds of gospel stories for it. But Jesus ministering to the people who know how to fish. We got people, we got memory here of the Lord Jesus calling them to be fishers of men. We have memory here of the fish and the loaves and the feeding the thousands of people with this few things. All kinds of memories tied up into this passage. Three years the Lord Jesus spent with these and this passage reminds them of a number of things along that pathway. We go to the beach, we saw a charcoal fire and fish cooking on it, and bread, and Jesus said, bring some of the fish that you caught. So Simon went aboard the net, large fish, large fish, 153, and there were so many, the net was not yet torn. I want you to know that when you go fishing, when the Lord Jesus would have you fishing, don't be surprised if your catch is large. It is an amazing thing to do what God calls you to do. And when God calls you to do it, he blesses it. Though sometimes not as fast or not in the way that we had planned, but when you do something, God blesses it. So Jesus says in verse 12, come and have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew without any doubt it was the Lord. Of course, he just dropped 150 fish, on 153 fish on their laps. It is the Lord. Blessings abundant. Jesus came, took the bread, gave it to them, likewise the fish. And this was the third time Jesus appeared. When they finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Others with total commitment and devotion. And he said to them, Yes, Lord, I love you with a deep personal friendship. Jesus said, Feed my lambs to know that Jesus is talking about agape. Agape takes the creator of the universe to the cross, and he dies not knowing and not caring if anybody responds, but knowing that some will. Perfect love is agape. Agape is doing something and having no hope of recompense for it. Um, I particularly like it when I drop a gift off at somebody's house, and they don't know it's me. That's the best part. It's not like, oh, I can't give you a gift. Okay, well, you're welcome, but no one got it have me to do. Agape is absolute love, no conditions, no feedback required. I absolutely. And so Jesus asked him, Simon Peter, Simon whom we call Peter, do you love me with the same love that I had when I went to the cross for you? And Peter says, I, I like you like a best friend, Leo. I like you a lot. You're like my bestest friend. But please notice that phileo and agape are not the same thing. Greek has four different words for love. These are two I'll talk to you about today. He said, feed my lambs. Feed my lambs. So, the Lord Jesus laid out this big thing, do you love me as much as I do? And he says, I like you a lot. You're my best friend. And, and instead of criticizing him for that response, which is real, because remember that Simon Peter just a few weeks ago has vehemently denied the Lord Jesus in front of a servant girl and with the curses that come from a fisherman's mouth. And as I told you, I was a fisherman for a while, so some of us were pretty mouthy. 
And he says, I cannot, I can't say those words that I love you that much. I'll instead say the words, I love you like a best friend. Challenge to Peter is, feed my lambs. The call on Peter's life was to feed his lambs. Peter ministered to lives. Peter actually exhibited agape. Peter died upside down on a cross because he didn't want to die the same way the Lord Jesus did. He changed the world, and the call from Jesus Christ was feed my people. Now, you think that's just a pastor's call, but it's not. It's your call, too. How do you reach out to the people around you? How do you minister to lives? Well, sometimes you need to tell them, do you know that Jesus loves you and died for you? But sometimes it's groceries, and sometimes it's opening the door, and sometimes, and sometimes it's helping people across the street, and sometimes, I have no idea, sometimes it's smiling at the guy at Cumberland Farms. Sometimes it's the little things that make a difference in lives around you. And people remember it. Thank you. And people remember it. People remember it. And they say, I remember the day that you opened the door for me. Okay. It was a great day. Huh? I, I don't remember it. But people remember, what do you do? How do you feed people? Well, there's all kinds of needs that people have. They need, every person on the planet needs sleep, food, water. And every, and every person on the planet needs a savior. Every person on the planet. So how are you going to feed them? Sometimes with an act of kindness, sometimes with a word of their of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Feed my lips. It's not just a word for the Apostle Peter. This is a word for me and for you. How are you going to feed the people around me? Again, he says to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me with a total commitment and devotion? And he said to him, yes, Lord, I love you with a deep personal, close friend. Lord Jesus asked about agape. He names with phileo. And he says, shepherd my sheep. Sometimes in our homes, we have to think, what does a shepherd do in our home? Sometimes we have to think, what can I do to protect my home? Because the shepherd has life for his sheep. Sometimes we need to watch what our kids are watching. Sometimes we need to watch what our kids are playing. Sometimes we even need to watch who our kids are hanging out with. Shepherd, shepherd my sheep, protect them. And then he said the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me like I'm your best friend? And Peter was grieved that he asked him, Time, do you love me like I'm your best friend? And he said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. He says, feed my sheep. If you love Jesus, then you need to be reaching out into the lives of others. If you love, if you say you love Jesus, you need to reach out into the lives of others. Sometimes quietly, sometimes boldly, sometimes verbally, sometimes not. Peter, humiliated and shamed a few weeks back, has now been challenged to feed the people. See, God doesn't need perfect people. He doesn't got any. He's got you and me. And you and me, by the way, aren't perfect people. But you and me, amen. <laughs> but you and me are people. And you and me are people that have people around us that need us. People around us that are desperate for our friendly face or our cup of water or whatever it is that we do, uh, taking them shopping or helping them hobble into church, you and me is what he's got. And then 18, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, when you were young, you dressed yourself and you walked wherever you wished. When you grow old, 
You will stretch out your hands and your arms, and someone else will dress you and carry you where you do not wish to go. Peter, young, bold, could step out on the world. coming a time in his life where he can't do nothing without having somebody guide him. And you will, they will stretch out your arms. The apostle Peter died an extreme death on a cross upside down because he didn't figure he was even worthy to die the same way his Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ did. This is to indicate the kind of death which Peter would glorify God. And he said this, he said to Peter, follow me, follow me. To follow God, that you would follow him. That you would do what he's called you to do. That you would make a difference in lives around you. So often we take these things of the gospel and go, wow, this is so great. This is like hot fudge Sunday day. This is like, whoa, this is the coolest thing. But if you don't share it, it bloats you. God has called you to share your giftings. So Jesus says to him, follow me. And Peter instantly turns around and says, what about this guy? What about this guy, John? And Jesus says, it doesn't matter to you what I called him to do. You need to do what I called you to do. But what about him? And Jesus said, even if John was alive when I come back, that's not up to you. What's up to you is what you do with what I've called you to do. What are you doing with what I've called you to do? What are you doing with what I've called you to do? And so this whole rumor started that John was going to never die, and, and John had to quote that. But the message here for me and you is that you would follow Jesus, that I would follow Jesus, and not care that you've been called to do this or that, and I've been called to do this or that. You will follow Jesus, and you will do what he has called you to do, and your life will be different, and your world will be different, and your joy will be unspeakable and full of glory. The Lord Jesus says to Simon Peter, follow me. And he says to you and me, follow me. Where will that take you? I don't know. Where will that take you? That will take you into places of prayer. That will take you into places of his word. That will take you into places of worship. That will take you places you had never guessed were possible. The Lord Jesus says, follow me. The challenge for me and for you is will you follow him? wherever he goes. Lord, we thank you for your challenge today. We thank you that we can be transformed by your mercy, by your great grace. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Speak to us, O oh Lord, so that we can make a difference in a desperate and dying world. Transform us so that our vision is much bigger than our appetites. Do a mighty work in us so that lives can be touched around us. In Christ's name. And remember tonight we have service and Wednesday night we have service. Sunday night we have service, and then next Sunday is new membership class. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together.
have said to me, you do not see me, you do not see what's going on in my life, because if you did, you would fix these things. I tell you that I do see you. I have been reaching out to you since you were born. I have a love for you that's never ending and will never stop. But it is you that have put up barriers to me. I tell you that if you will open your heart to me, if you will confess your sins before me and give your life to me, then I will turn things around for you. But the decision is up to you. Amen. May the Lord keep you and bless you and transform you so that you can make a difference in a desperate and dying world. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen.